Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you are finding yourself on my channel for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one every single day at 1pm UK time to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the cryptocurrency space, but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be starting the video off with a clip of Gary Gensler trolling Bitcoin maxis and calling Bitcoin centralized and pointing out the irony of a Bitcoin spot ETF. A bit of a troll on his behalf. Then we are going to be looking at the continued sell pressure via Grayscale. Now, actually, this is perfect. We knew a sell-off was coming technically as we had ran into resistance. And we're now waiting for that right shoulder to form for Bitcoin that will ultimately perhaps take us to around about the 140, 150K range. So we are going to be looking at that. And of course, today we had news that the SEC has postponed the approval of an Ethereum spot ETF, basically saying they need a little bit more time on it. This is what we saw with Bitcoin. You are going to have an Ethereum ETF eventually. And then altcoin ETFs will be coming. And you guys, as early investors get to front run all of the institutions. So lots to talk about. We're also going to be looking at things technically, re-bringing up this kind of macro headwind as rates adjust on higher inflationary prints uh, and a number of other uh, economic data points. Lots to cover. We'll look at Binance inflows also. But let's start the video off. And let's start the video off with this clip of Gary Gensler trolling and pointing out the irony of a Bitcoin spot ETF. And I want to know your thoughts. Look, there are no doubt there are innovations within this field and those innovations which I taught about at MIT around a ledger system. It's just an accounting system called the blockchain technology. But there's an irony in the midst of this. Satoshi Nakamoto said this was going to be a decentralized system. And, and finance, this has led to centralization. Think about the irony of those who say this week is historic. This was about centralization and traditional means of finance that investors who could already express themselves in Bitcoin, you could already, before this week, buy it through major brokerage houses, but now you can buy it through this thing called an exchange-traded product but the underlying as well, asset still has centralized. Those, the, the underlying asset still has the decentralized, distributed ledger, all those characters. I, I, that sounds like a... I don't know. That does. That sounds no, like no, a no bit, Andrew. With all respect, it, there's a lot of centralization right. here, and even the underlying ledger right. is largely right. uh, the, the bitcoins produced by sure. a handful of mining uh, uh, companies and the like. And so I'm just saying. So I guess he's still kind of annoyed that he had no other choice but to approve a Bitcoin spot ETF. But rather interesting what he's saying there. Uh, and actually, I think there's been a real irony and a kind of. Um, different attitude by Bitcoin maximalists that have really held up. And we think Bitcoin maxes are confused. You know, distributed ledgers have way more applications than just being an alternative store of value. And we're looking into a lot of this. I've got a great video coming out for you guys later. Um, but there is a kind of irony with a Bitcoin spot ETF and the Bitcoin maxis really wanting that to take place. I can see it from their point of view in regards to pensions and sort of... Um, uh, 401ks and stuff like that and getting Bitcoin into that and exposure to um, a whole different populace via that. But also, you know, BlackRock, just like they did with the stock market, may be looking to take over a large part of the cryptocurrency market by becoming the largest holder. And BlackRock are set to be bigger than MicroStrategy by the 1st of February. So some interesting comments there to continue on in regards to the SEC. Let's dive over to this article from The Block. The SEC delays decision on Fidelity's proposed spot Ethereum ETF to March. So not that far. Um, I don't know whether March is going to be the date or not. It's looking, I think, the probabilities of August. The comments that they made were the commission finds it appropriate to designate a longer time period within which to take action on the proposed rules change so that it has sufficient time to consider the proposed rule change and the issues raised therein, said the SEC. So this is interesting. They've delayed it until essentially the 5th of March. You already have Ethereum futures ETFs currently um, in the United States. You even have an Ethereum leverage future ETF. So they have approved Ethereum products, but not ones that are actually represented with spot. And you can see one of the conditions that they um, put on the Bitcoin spot ETF was that it has to be settled in cash, not actual Bitcoin, which was 
I think a kind of uh, final dig from Gensler as he capitulated to a uh, flurry of failing lawsuits. Um, so to move on, Bitcoin price could face more pressure with GBTC profit taking, says JP Morgan. And this is something that we looked at. So we took part in the Grayscale arbitrage trade, Grayscale's trust trade, which wasn't pegged to the price of Bitcoin. It fluctuated. It was at a massive discount, obviously caused by the bear market. That discount got finalized and closed on the actual ETF approval because then it becomes pegged to the actual price of Bitcoin. So that has been a large part of the sell pressure that we've seen. It's why I think it dumped so hard on Friday. And that sell pressure is continuing. Uh, however, we are seeing inflows on other... Um, Bitcoin ETFs, and we get a lot of comments saying, okay, well, how come we've seen all these inflows? $10 billion in the first three days. Insane, a massive success as far as an ETF and, and, and um, volume. But the reason being is because volume is very different from inflows uh, and certainly outflows. Volume is the overall amount of what's traded. The price will go up if there's more inflows and outflows, basically basic supply and demand. And the mechanics of an ETF are rather interesting. You do have third parties that are involved in facilitating the ETF and the buying and selling of it, like JP Morgan. You know, so it, it, the price is definitely being manipulated by ETFs, as we all suspected it would. But the beautiful thing for us is, actually, this is brilliant. Because we were expecting, you know, this is a very, to take the draw off quickly, key level that Bitcoin ran into. And you can see the kind of uh, wicking candle that we got as a result of that. Now, just like we were predicting a, a lower down head and shoulders that ran us into 42K, that was our prediction for 2023. We are now predicting that a right shoulder sets up here. The point where we're wrong is if you take your left shoulder. And I ultimately think that this could, depending on where you want to draw your neckline, take you up to, just like we projected in 2023, around about $150,000. And that would line up with where we think stocks are going, where we think gold's going. Remember, Bitcoin is in an uptrend against these. So Bitcoin's really just having a rest at a time where you've got that buy the rumor, sell the news thing, grayscale of dumping, and you've got a little bit of macro uncertainty based on rates um, and the pricing out of interest rates now being readjusted, which of course is causing resistance for the stock market when it's already technically at resistance. You know, this is the S&P, this is the NASDAQ, one of our beautiful trades last year. You can see this is now pushing on to new all-time highs. There's no reason, even the DAX looks good. There's no reason to be bearish across the board. Uh, and you can see stocks are actually doing, and did well yesterday, despite Bitcoin not. And I think that this also has to do with Bitcoin running into a key level against the likes of the S&P. You can see here our target. You essentially could be setting up a similar thing for Bitcoin Um against the S&P as you are with the dollar, which would see Bitcoin outperform. We know Bitcoin's already broken out in an uptrend. Also against the NASDAQ, you can see target made, rest being taken. Uh, and of course, gold, um, which I think did okay yesterday. And gold, we think is all going all the way to the three to four thousand dollar mark. Um, this kind of looks like the Nikkei, um, rather interestingly. Um, but not to go too much on the macro, there is a bit of a headwind. You've got a bit of a strong dollar. You know, we think the dollar is coming down to the lower band of this channel. And we think this might be one of the real best places to, to short the dollar around about here. And this coming down is going to be correlated with Bitcoin. Dollar does this, Bitcoin does this. And just to pull up Bitcoin to show you that uh, if we're going to make that claim, we need to technically back it up. Uh, we'll use Bitstamp. And we'll put them both on log. So you can see point where Bitcoin, and we'll take the draw off has ran into stall box dollar down bitcoin up the dollar up bitcoin stalling uh, so we need this to revert and we think that you're not going to run this and break market structure on what is going to be a broader downtrend this was just a uh, retaliation move against what is now in our opinion a broader trend which again lines in with our broader macro thesis so we still think the bull market is on i think people get way too worried you see all these headlines like you know, sub 30k coming and 90% and reduction in altcoins and all this nonsense. There's no reason to suspect that in our opinion. Altcoins look healthy. Markets don't just go up, they go down. You're going to have good weeks, you're going to have bad weeks. We're going to help you sail through all of that. Uh, and the last thing I want to kind of talk about now that we broadly address things is Binance. Now, Binance, since the lawsuit, has seen net inflows of $4.6 billion since reaching a settlement with the us agency in november now bnb is a token attached with binance and i can't help but feel like there's something coming for that um but maybe that's for an entirely different video so as always i want to know your thoughts what do you think about against the trolling the bitcoin maxis and calling bitcoin centralized 
What do you think about where we currently are and where we're heading? Do you and are you on the same uh, page as me in regards to this is just the right shoulder forming up and we're getting constant market feedback just like we did all of last year that's kind of solidifying that? Or do you think this is um, the start of a deeper correction and, 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 and you know, uh, things aren't going to be as obvious as we're perhaps pointing them out to be. Uh, but we get our view not just based on Bitcoin, based on uh, a 360 view of most of the markets, rates, macro, micro, technicals, and everything. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it. So as a comment, don't forget to become a subscriber. Also check out my Patreon if you want to get uh, more interaction with me, i.e. two weekly meetings uh, where it's me with you guys talking about things. And of course, you unlock my entire portfolio, some courses uh, and any trades that I do take. So that's all I've got for you in this video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, like, appreciate it as a comment and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.